this series of videos I'm attempting to repair and restore this HP 9845B vintage computer. In the previous video in this series I started working repairing the tape drive and in particular the TACO control board for the tape drive and it's uh, had a number of faults. This is in fact not the same board. I found an issue with the other board that I'll come back to in a few minutes. Um, but that issue made me want to try and get this board working as an easier fix and then I would go back to the other board and explain the problem on that one uh, later on. So when I plug this board in initially it calls the machine to stop responding so when you try to issue a tape command it would start the process and then the machine would just hang so there was clearly something wrong with the way the board was responding and when I ran the um, tape test routine in the test ROM, the error message I got was uh, flag line timeout. And there's a flag line, as you can probably guess, on the output of the TACO chip, and that's to let the 9845 know that the tape drive system is ready. And uh, that wasn't changing state but it's uh, an output directly from the TACO chip but I didn't really think that chip was faulty it is possible of course, hybrid module um, they're fairly reliable so I kind of assumed it was more likely one of the buffer chips on the inputs the buffer chips on pretty much any sub-assembly are all fair targets they get uh, a lot of abuse with them being um, plugged in, unplugged and also the voltage spikes that they receive from other parts of the system can cause issues and sure enough when I started scoping these all I did was put a scope on the inputs and outputs and look for anything untoward and by the time I got to the second device I found that some of the outputs uh, they were changing state but they were going from uh, floating to high they wouldn't ever go low and that was this uh, device over here so uh, I replaced that to 7404, replaced that and then the board came to life and it would start responding to the tape commands but it still wouldn't work. I found another faulty IC, another buffer um, IC that wasn't working. It, this is where um, the threshold generated and the threshold wasn't being controlled so I replaced that as well. I put both of these in sockets as you can see. Um, but the board still wouldn't work and that's where we are now in this video and I'm hoping in this video to get this board working and also the other board working as well. So the boards now both seem to have the same fault and before I explain what the fault is I thought I would take a bit of time and just explain um, how the tape drive system works. If you're familiar with tape drive systems you might want to skip this part of the video. If you're not I'll just briefly explain how uh, tape drive systems work and in particular uh, how this particular system saves data to the tape. So this is the schematic for the data part of the tape drive taco board. And before I start explaining how this circuit works, I thought it might make it a lot easier if I just explain the basics of a tape drive itself. So we'll do that first. And got a few very simple drawings here to try and help the explanation along. We'll start with this one. You're probably familiar with this, just a, a toroidal core, a couple of coils. If you pass the current um, through the first coil you will induce a flux into the core but that flux is fairly well contained within the core it doesn't kind of leak out anywhere and where it leaks out you will get a magnetic field being generated and we can of course put another coil around this core and um, pick up a uh, or get a, uh, a signal current induced into that co uh, coil so the point here is that when we have a continuous ring like this we get a flux within the core but we don't really get any external magnetic fields but what we can do of course is cut the core in half so if we cut the core in half and then apply a signal um, anything from DC up through an AC signal 
then where we get the end of the core we will get a magnetic field being generated where the flux effectively leaks out of the core and this is the basis for a magnetic tape read write head but it's not very practical like this um, you'd have a very large uh, separation of the two poles of the magnet and that's not really what we want when we're trying to write data to a tape but what we can do is cut out a smaller section of the core and end up with something like this so we have just a small cut in the core and uh, we still have a coil around it and now when we apply a signal to this coil uh, we get a bit of flux leaking out where the cut in the core is so we've got the uh, flux uh, being generated in the core and where it leaks out we get a magnetic field being generated around this split and that's what we can make use of uh, to write data to a tape also if we apply a magnetic field to this area of the core we will generate a flux within the core and that can be used to generate a current in the coil so we can use this to both write data to some magnetic medium and also to read data back so if we take this a step further what we end up with is something like this we pass the tape at a constant speed normally constant speed past the uh, cut in the core and then we can either write information onto the tape the tape is of course coated with a magnetic media and uh, we can either modify the current state of that magnetic media by applying a signal to the coil which makes its way through the core as a flux leaks out as a magnetic field and that field impinges on the tape and we can use that to modify the current state of the magnetic media or we can pull the tape past the head at this point and that uh, action if the tape has any information on it will generate a magnetic field and the f resultant flux will be uh, used here to generate a signal in the coil so we now have the basis for a tape drive system I'm oversimplifying this but uh, this is in general terms how they work now in this particular system we're not recording uh, audio so uh, we have some fairly um, specific requirements for our system here so the um, encoding of the data in this particular system uses a length encoding system so in essence the absolute length is not that important as long as it's within certain limits the taco device keeps track of the difference between what it sees as short pulses and long pulses and by pulses what I'm talking about is transitions flux transitions on the tape and if the um, transition period is more than 1.33 times what it perceives as being the short period it sees that as a 1 if it's less than 1.33 times the short period it sees that as a zero but it's not a single um, level pulse it's a differential signal that it uses so it's only looking at transitions between one state and another and then the relative time to the next one so if we look at that on a diagram we've got the tape here obviously greatly enlarged and greatly exaggerated and as the tape moves past the read write head we have the right to it or read from it and in this case we have the uh, state of the magnetic media indicated here with these diagonal lines and each time there is a, uh, a transition a state change between one state and another that is picked up by the uh, read write head and the tape in theory is moving at a relatively steady speed so what the system can do is measure the time interval between these transitions and it uses that to determine if the um, bit is a zero or a one if it's more than 1.33 times the length of the short periods it's seeing it's 
specifies that as being a 1. If it's less than that, it specifies it as being a 0. So quite a simple system, but it doesn't mean it's quite efficient in terms of the way it writes data onto the tape. Now, there is a complication here, and one of the reasons why um, HP used the, uh, the TACO device, because in theory this is fairly straightforward and you don't really need a complex device to generate this control. But where it gets more complex is when you start trying to do this at high speed. So as you start increasing the speed of the tape, and as you start making this slot smaller in the read-write head, the field gets smaller as you reduce the size of uh, this slot, but it does mean that you can write smaller um, events, if you like, to the tape. The time it takes for the flux to change as you pull the tape past the head, or as you try to write data to the head, is fairly finite. It does take time for that to happen. So there is kind of a natural speed limit for a given head design and a given tape type. And if you go any faster than that, you'll get unreliable reading and writing of the tape. So once you've got to that maximum speed, the only way you can st uh, store more information for a given length of tape, and hence increase your data throughput rate, is to make these shorter. So you can have shorter um, duration, shorter periods between the flux transitions on the tape. Now the problem you run into when these get too short is as they start to approach the width of the tape head slot, that is the uh, effective size of this uh, flux leakage field, uh, they start to interact. So if you get two ones, for example, this one will be slightly affected by this because they both are fairly close to the read-write head. So once you've written the data onto the tape, if you don't take uh, preventative measures, you can end up with uh, artificially stretched or shrunk um, periods on the tape where the length or the time between the transitions isn't what you actually wrote onto it. And if we look at that in terms of a diagram, so looking at this uh, diagram, uh, this is a series of ones, so each transition, and these are all the same length, so each transition um, will uh, allow the TACO to determine whether this is a zero or a one. But the problem that we have here is that because these are all fairly close together, and on this particular system, it writes anything up to 1,600 bits per inch. So if they're all zeros and they're all short, there'll be 1,600 bits for every inch of tape. And that is, of course, approaching the size of the slot in the read-write head. So we need pre-compensation. And what the pre-compensation does is instead of writing this information to the tape or trying to write this information to the tape, this is the information that comes into the controller from the HP, but the TACO device modifies this based on the data that's going through and it will change the data as it's written to the tape and if it doesn't do that what you'd end up with when you read this back this is non pre-compensated read back if you like would end up with the first transition is fine because there's nothing else in this vicinity but the next one is artificially dragged this way because of the presence of the next um, flux state on the tape. So this pulse ends up being too long. Because this is present, this start of this pulse is pulled this way because of the presence of this. And then the same thing happens on the falling edge. And so this center pulse is much longer than it should be. And then you have the similar issue on in reverse to the first pulse. So the pulses end up all the wrong length when you try and read them back from the tape. So what the pre-compensation does, and I'm simplifying this um, just for the sake of this explanation because it is a differential signal, so the pre-compensation has to work in both directions, but I'm only showing it in one um, phase uh, in this uh, diagram. Um, but the principle is the same. So what the system does is instead of writing this series 
to the tape it uses this this is the pre-compensated version of this so it writes an artificially short pulse in the center a slightly shortened pulse for these two and then when you read this back because of this effect you end up recreating exactly what you wanted in the first place so that's what the pre-compensation does but just bear in mind these are the signals you're likely to see on the system when you're looking at data being written to the tape so if you see your variable length pulses even though the data coming in is all fixed length don't be alarmed that's just the taco doing its job to make sure that what's read back from the tape is correct okay so now we know what signals we're looking for we can investigate the circuit so this is the schematic for the part of the circuit we're interested in and this is where the current fault lies as I said this is not currently working in the previous video we found a fault with this transistor so I replaced that we weren't getting anything out of here and when I replaced the transistor this came back to life this is as I said a different board uh, it, this transistor was working fine on this board so we are getting this signal but we're not getting anything out of here and this is the um, the flux transition signal so if we look back at our diagram the taco chip needs to be able to see whenever there is a transition and it can't see that because there is nothing coming out of this device so the way the circuit works again I'll simplify this but we have data coming in from the left here from the tape drive it goes through this this is an amplifier and filter so it filters out the high frequencies so filters out the um, whistles and pops and uh, winding that you'd normally get from a tape drive the data although it's fairly high speed it's still only uh, uh, still less than two kilohertz uh, so um, we can use a fairly low pass filter here which is what this is and we get a fairly low pass signal so if I just write that on here we'll get something so we'll get something that looks like that the amplitude will vary um, what we're interested in here is the width of each of these pulses because that will determine whether we are getting a one or a zero from the tape now at this point the signal splits into two paths one of these paths carries on through this which is a further amplifier and signal conditioner kind of squares up the signal and uh, makes it easier to measure the interval of the pulses the other thing we need to do is determine if we are seeing a rising edge or a falling edge so the signal comes down through here goes into these two comparators the threshold of these comparators is actually quite a low value but it's controlled partly from a fixed value resistor on the tape drive but also it can be modified by the taco chip so these lines come from the taco control chip but uh, what this device does is it creates a positive going pulse when we have a positive going edge and it creates a on this line and it creates a positive going pulse when we have a falling edge so we'll get alternating pulses on these two lines based on whether the current data is a falling edge or a rising edge that goes through this circuit now it also carries on and this is kind of an old value of those two signals and it's used to control the uh, buffering of the output signal to the taco device um, but what we'll get here are two signals or we should get are two signals where um, they are used to enable one or other of these two comparators and which one is enabled will depend on whether the signal is rising or falling so let's assume that the first one is enabled then if the signal goes above the uh, threshold which in this case is zero for both of them so this is really a zero crossing detector so if the signal is rising as soon as the signal goes above zero in other words as soon as it goes across zero volts then we get an output spike that's used to control this and the output of this is sent through to the taco in the form of a flux transition indication so it's used to allow the taco device to determine there has been a transition of flux on the tape 
Um, if the signal is going the other way, then the other comparator is enabled, and then the reverse happens, where um, when the signal drops below zero, we get an output pulse. So in other words, this is a series of spikes, short duration pulses, that indicate fairly accurately when there is a transition of flux on the tape. So it's really measuring very accurately these points where the signal crosses at zero. And it's uh, the reason for having the dual comparators in each one is that it is a differential signal. So it does this in both the positive going part of the cycle and the negative going. And then this is just a range so that the clock, clear and data are used to pass that signal onto the TACO device in such a way that it can make sense of it and read it. So quite a uh, clever system. Now the problem we're getting, and I'll demonstrate this in a second, is there's nothing coming out of this IC. We are now getting the signals going in, um, but there's nothing coming out. So I'll just demonstrate this. What we've got on the scope is um, channel one is the data going into these comparators. Channel two is the uh, strobe line. So these are comparators, but they are strobable, so you can enable or disable each one independently, but the outputs are all together inside the device. Um, channel three is the second of those strobe lines. So as I said, we should get alternating pulses on these two lines. And then channel four is the output of this dual comparator. So I'll get the HP powered up, I'll put a tape in the drive and then we'll have a look and see if we can capture any data. Okay, I've got the HP powered up, it's got the test ROM in there and I've got the tape test uh, started up. What I'm going to do is try and access the tape, this will cause um, the system to try and read from the tape and we've got the scope hooked up as I indicated. What I'm going to do is, as soon as this starts up, I'm going to press the single um, capture button and try and capture uh, active data coming from the tape. There's a bit of a noise spike at the beginning of the process, which uh, we don't really want to capture. But if we try and capture some real data, we'll hopefully see what's going on. So I'll get this started. And hopefully what you can see here is the yellow trace is the incoming data and you can see that's it's varying in amplitude but so that's to be expected that's just dependent on the uh, nature of the signal on the tape and also the duration of the pulse on the tape longer uh, duration pulses will tend to give a bigger output what we then see is the purple and blue traces and these are the two um, signals I indicated here. So one will go high whenever we are seeing a, uh, a signal going down and one will uh, go high whenever we're seeing a signal going up. And you can see that fairly clearly. Hopefully you can see that fairly clearly. So if I superimpose the data you can see that the purple trace goes high whenever the yellow trace is falling and the blue trace goes high whenever the uh, yellow trace is rising. And they're never high at the same time, uh, but you can see that we are getting a fairly uh, good correlation between the incoming data and those two control pulses. Um, but the green trace is connected to uh, pin 9, which is the output of this dual comparator. And as you can see, it never does anything. So it looks like that particular device is faulty and that's where I've got to with the other board. And as you can probably see, I've removed that device from the board, so that's this one. And uh, the reason I switched to this second board is I assumed that well, I hoped it was working on this uh, particular board. We seem to have exactly the same fault. And it's not that surprising if you look at the data sheet for this particular device and uh, it's got uh, the usual weird uh, HP uh, number, but basically it's uh, uh, an LM711CH uh, dual comparator with strobe control. Um, but uh, when you look at the internal um, circuitry for that device, 
it's not that surprising it's failed so the output from that device goes through to this buffer this is a 74 ls07 and these devices have protection diodes built into the inputs so anything that goes too far above the um, plus 5 volt supply rail uh, will effectively be shorted to that rail if you go too far below ground then the input will effectively be shorted to ground which means that when you remove one of the power rails on this device you can damage the output and the output just appears to be floating on both of these so if you put a um, say a 1 meg resistor on the output to uh, high or low um, there's a resistor here already but if you remove that and put a resistor on it going high or low then you can pull the output high or low irrespective of whatever signals you put on the input and what I've said in previous videos is I like to have a guess at what might be causing issues and then try and confirm that so with the device I took out I soldered some extension leads to it put it into a breadboard and confirmed the mode of failure and sure enough the output does appear to be open circuit so what I'm going to do is fit a replacement device to this board I'll get it hooked up and see if we get any further I fitted a replacement device to the second of the two boards so this is the board we were just testing but as I said it has exactly the same fault as the other board so I fitted the replacement device to this board I've got the scope hooked up to the output pin of that device so looking back at the schematic um, we're now hooked up to the output pin and that was the green trace previously and if you remember we were getting nothing at all out of that pin also when I try to run the test I'm going to run the same test and what I'm trying to do here is uh, read back the data that's on the tape and as you saw before it would run for a second decide the tape wasn't uh, formatted and then stop the test it should just keep running until I stop it uh, so we'll start up the test keep an eye on the scope and hopefully we get something out of that device now and we are indeed now getting some data and you can see the difference between the lengths of the ones and zeros and more importantly the tape is still running I'll now move the camera so you can see the screen on the um, HP monitor I'll just stop this first so we don't run off the end of the tape okay I'll just turn the light off so you can see the monitor a bit better and um, what we're going to see here is the output of the data from the tape now there's nothing being written to this tape yet apart from some test data so it will be fairly random data but the point is we should see it changing uh, so I'll start this test going let's rewind first and as you can see there was a few seconds where the value was one two three four five six which is some test data I did write to the tape but from that point on it's just random uh, noise on the tape but you can see it is changing and not only that I was getting the correct data at the beginning of the tape so it looks like this uh, drive is now working I'll just move the camera back so this uh, taco board does now seem to be doing what it's supposed to I'll carry out some further testing make sure it's um, working 100% the way it's supposed to and then I'll replace the device on this board as well the second tape drive doesn't work I think it's got a failure in the taco sensor so I'll repair that in a separate video um, but it does look like at least we have got this particular taco board up and running uh, the next step of course is to run through all the tests on the test ROM and then we can start looking at the tapes themselves so in the next video I'll look at the tapes and uh, show how to modify the DC2000 tapes to work on this particular machine.